Welcome everybody to the last business of rowing talk of the day. Uh, this is uh, ORS for everyone. As you can see, we have a big panel for this uh, for this talk and for the next 90 minutes or so. Uh, before we go to all our panelists and their introductions, uh, we're gonna hop to uh, Adam of Orboard, who is our sponsor for this talk and is going to tell us a little bit more about his product. Well, thank you, Jules. Uh, we're talking about fitness, fun, and adventure, and uh, an honor to actually sponsor the Oars for everyone. Uh, I think it lines well with the values that we hold dear at Oarboard. Uh, talk, be talking about a few things uh, today, starting with a thank you. Describe what the Oarboard is for those of you who aren't familiar with the product, and then talk through some a few case studies, and then wrap up. So first of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity to sponsor this talk. Uh, we care deeply about getting as many bums in seats and removing the barriers to entry. So I think that it's it's a great uh, alignment with what we're trying to do. Uh, our One of our bigger goals with Orboard is to actually grow the amount of people who get exposed to rowing and increase the amount of people who access rowing. And you might learn a little bit more about that in the case studies. Uh, and myself, my name is Adam Creek. I'm an Olympic gold medalist for Canada. So thank you for letting me in, <laughs> even I'm a Canadian. And, and uh, I took an or a rowboat. I rowed it across the ocean. We capsized in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, that was interesting too. Uh, now I'm a dad, three kids. So I spend most of my time, there's a picture of me with my kid, take, taking them out, going crab fishing, camping. Uh, I love saunas, build fences, gardening, and that kind of thing. I also wrote a book. So if you like personal development, professional development, wrapped in rowing, uh, rowing stories, uh, just got published uh, this year and we're launching the audiobook uh, in the early next year. So uh, that's who I am. I've been, I've been an Orboard user from the beginning. We helped design it and I've been involved with the company uh, for over 12 years. So what is the Orboard? Uh, the Orboard is an easy to store uh, collapsible, uh, easy to store unit. It's fully collapsible, this unit. Uh, it has a sliding rigger which is interesting. That makes it actually, uh, I'll tell, talk a little bit more about it when we talk about learning to row, but uh, the sliding rigger is useful. There are no wheels on this, so it makes the equipment rugged and it allows it to, as we use frictionless plastic, so it's easy to maintain. Uh, it can attach to an inflatable SUP. And uh, again, with these oars that break into two, we, it allows it to be transported anywhere. So it's a, it's a pretty clever way to make rowing more accessible to more people outside of the club system, as well as access um, adventure. And this is one of the things that tries me to it, uh, an adventurous soul myself. I've taken this oarboard out and I've surfed waves that are uh, close to a meter high uh, comfortably on the oarboard, which is a ton of fun. Uh, if you think about it, taking it camping, I've thrown a case of beer on it and gone out and fishing, which is great. Uh, I've taken an air travel. I took it to Molo, uh, to Kauai and rowed out to Molokini Island. Uh, rowing amongst the whales as they're blowing air to their holes is a pretty cool experience. It also fits in small cars. So if you've got a K car, I drove a really tiny Golf uh, for many years. I couldn't carry around boats on it, but I could carry this thing. And we have a number of people who have apartments or condos. And so they take this unit, they collapse it, put it in their condo, and then they can bring it down to the water, which is right by where they live. So it's, it's accessible for uh, many different lifestyles, many different ways. And it's also easy to teach. So the, the teach kids on it, we've taken a lot of kids and I'm actually quite impressed when you first put a, a kid on this who has almost no experience, how quickly they start rowing properly. And that's because of the sliding rigor. The sliding rigor causes you to focus on your legs, which is obviously the, uh, the foundation of the drive. And so it allows these kids to, to gain the tech, some technique um, um, focuses a lot quicker. Uh, and uh, you can set it up as a, as a single or a double. Uh, you can play bumper boats. Uh, we Earlier this year, we took uh, went up to a school and we ran a row values program. World Rowing has set out a number of exercises to teach kids values through rowing. And we taught them on these oar boards. And then we also played a game called uh, row ball. Uh, and all the equipment, normally when you have equipment, you're, you have to teach the kids to protect it. But they love these because they could just ram the boards into one another, play bumper boats, get rowdy. And it reached that magical point where, as a rowing coach, you're really proud where the, the athletes forget about the fact that they're using equipment. 
and the equipment just becomes an extension of their body. So that was really magical to see, um, you know, as a coach, as a teacher, and watch them really uh, fall, you know, fall in love with it. And that, if you're curious about the row values bit, there is, um, uh, it's on the World Rowing YouTube channel if you want to see uh, how we implemented that. So I'm going to share three quick stories. First one's from Oklahoma City. They purchased 10 of these ore boards as part of their, their program. They rent them out to the general public, but they also make the ore boards available to their, their junior program. Because of social distancing, they're allowed to maintain social distancing on these ore boards. They actually put them together into some kind of eight. So it was fun to see nine ore boards. So eight rowers and one cox, they were all out. And you can see some of the comments on the side. The girls absolutely loved this. And uh, you can see how it was, uh, it was a ton of fun. They wish that they, they did this all the time. And you can see how it, uh, it would really enhance the junior rowing uh, practice. Other guy, Michael Rawlings, never been a rower, was a veteran uh, and, and you know, had a lot of injuries as you know, being part of the military, was able to use the ore board to help rehabilitate himself and has become uh, a big lover and advocate for, for the sport. And so here's a way to include people who wouldn't otherwise be in the, you know, in the system. When you have a lot of people like this who are 40 plus, who have never rode before, who pick up the sport and we train them and we teach them how to do this in their own little tiny corner of, uh, you know, of America, of the world. We're in 50 countries and it's, it's really inspiring to see how many cancer survivors, heart disease survivors, uh, you know, thrive with this. And I'll finish with this final case study in over in England, the Weybridge Rowing Club purchased a number of the units, as you can see, they just purchased the, the strap on units. And they found it useful for the juniors and for the masters and they were able to skip over that learn to row phase, you know, where you have to uh, row for three times a week for six weeks and you can often have members drop off because they can't commit to, to that, especially the, the masters, but they've been able to take people and put them out on this, uh, the or board. And if, even if they only show up once a week and keep them coming along on the process and gain a love of the sport, appreciation of the water, the connectivity that it creates. And they were also able to raise money for their club. They were able to sell a number of these units to their members who had cabins, boats, and for every board that's sold, uh, a credit is given back to the club so that they can purchase more equipment. So that's uh, one club that found a lot of success. So what does it cost for an ore board? This is, these are what the, an ore board costs if you're to buy the whole unit, the inflatable SUP, the strap on unit, the collapsible ores, the bags. So if you wanted to get this and you know, hop on a plane to Hawaii or go down to the Florida Keys or wherever and tootle around on your own, that's, this is great. If you just want to purchase the carriage, you already have the oars at your club. You want to get some used SUPs and put it on. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's only a thousand one ninety five uh, for it with no accessories. If you want the oars, a little bit more and the bag. And there's a twenty percent discount on right now if if anyone's interested in it. So thank you very much for learning about the ore board and how we're trying to make rowing accessible for everyone. We definitely agree with what you're doing. And so thank you for allowing us to sponsor this. And thank you for all that you do, all of you panelists. You, each of you are doing amazing and great things. So we're really proud to, uh, to be associated with you. So please stay in touch. If you wanna send me a note, this is how you can do it. Or you can find the ore board brand on any of your favorite social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. I'm, I'm glad we found a, a sponsor for this talk that kind of also is someone invested in, in kind of growing our sport in a new way. And even more exciting, we had two people in the chat who said they already have one or they used one and they loved it.